It's, you know, if you listen to a lot of, you know, current pop country, um, it sounds very similar. It's written, a lot of it's written by the same handful of people on Music Row, and it's recorded in the same studios with the same producers and the same engineers and the same musicians playing on everybody's stuff. And it sounds very much the same. And I think music in, a, in general has become a lot of the same. We have sounds in our head. It's really clear, upfront, big sound that's very real and very, you know, you could almost reach out and touch the instrument. It feels that present. Each time we record, we try to get a little closer to that. Oh my gosh, it's probably 10 years ago. Tom and I started writing music together. I've um, been a leader of bands in, in various ways for so long. We finally decided that we would like to see what it would be like if we started creating some albums. I don't even know what that song is. I'll be with you. That's That turned out to be Someday. Oh, that one was Someday? A lot of the songs <laughs> started out as something that they weren't. Tapestry of Shadows was a, a bit different CD for us. Because normally we would record in such a way where Heather and I would write all the music and then I'd play all the parts and we'd be done. Uh, the last CD before this, uh, which was um, All I Wanted to Hear, we invited a couple people in to play some extra parts and we kind of told them, here's what we want you to do. Kind of, here's the framework, do something really similar to this. This is the first time we opened it up to a completely open creative process. Tapestry of Shadows was very different because we took a leap of faith in these uh, three guys, other three guys that are in our band, the drummer Jimmy, uh, the violinist Gary, and the bass player Tony. And we said, you know, we're so excited to have you with us and we really like the way that you, uh, you create, even, you know, when we're in a concert or things like that and the camaraderie has been so great, why don't you join us and why don't you become part of the music itself? Well, we've started building a f friendship and a trust with each other over the last couple of years. Jim has been with us forever uh, since we started this because we needed a drummer and so we found Jim really early on since he, he knew Heather and uh, um, it just worked out well. And he's, he's not only proved himself as a drummer, but he's proved himself as a friend. And that's been really important. When Heather and I did a ton of uh, shows just as a duo, and Jim would always show up. And we we're like, this guy really cares about what we're doing. And so he earned our trust in that. And he tries really hard, and he, he works very diligently on the parts and things like that. So Jim was a, a natural, and he played on the last CD on, on quite a few of the songs. But it was an electronic drum kit, and we used samples and stuff like that because we didn't really have the means of uh, doing a, a full drum kit kind of thing at that time. So uh, I was talking to Tom and uh, we decided we were going to record down here uh, on real drums in a basement. I said, oh, that's great. Come on over. I'll get everything all set up for you. I got the kits. I got microphones. I even got a little fan to keep me cool. And he goes, Jim, you can't use any of that stuff. He goes, fans are noisy. Um, he goes, you can't have your drums up on a platform on a carpet. It's got to be a hard floor and we got to have all these baffles. So three days later he shows up with his truck and he's unpacking all these things and gonna, it, it occurs to me that they're going to really tear my basement apart. And um, so we started putting stuff up and um, my wife decided, hey, that room needs to be remodeled anyway, so let them go ahead and do it. So we put a lot of holes in the wall, so now every time I come down here and play, it's like playing in a hole in a wall. Well, in, um, in the Tapestry of Shadows, it, it, it was a great adventure coming into the band and, and performing the earlier material. Um, it was really fun to add my creativity to that prior album and prior albums and uh, so Tapestry of Shadow was great. It was a blank canvas and uh, Tom and Heather invited uh, me and the other musicians to come in create. We've been touring with Tony now for I don't know two and a half almost three years maybe 
And uh, we built up a really deep friendship with Tony as well. And he was good friends with Jim before that. And uh, we met Gary through uh, our previous violin player. He, he, he uh, sent me an email one day and said, hey, you guys still looking for a violin player? And I said, oh yeah. And he says, you ought to give this guy a call. He might be just the right fit for you guys. We got hold of Gary and it was instant friendship. Uh, I guess Tom and uh, Heather were looking for another fiddle player. So they called me and I was actually on vacation with uh, my daughter, uh, well, my wife over, we were in Colorado visiting my daughter and, and they, I said, well, yeah, it sounds interesting, you know, send me a, uh, they sent me a CD. So we popped it in uh, while we were driving. I loved the sound, you know, very unique. Um, and so then I came out, met uh, Tom and Heather, liked what they were doing and they liked me and that's it. We had a good time with the, the guys and we started writing songs. We decided this time we're going to do something completely different. Instead of even giving them a framework of what we want them to do for their parts, we're just going to put down our parts and then see what they can come up with. You know, I don't think people really realize how hard it is to, to record something. Um, you, you think you have uh, the timing down perfectly and the reality is in many cases you don't. Um, so I think the challenge was really just making sure you're right in the pocket, that you're right there. If you're uh, a second off, it, uh, it kind of, it, when you play it back, it's like, oh, that, that doesn't really sound very good. So I think the challenge was uh, really making sure that the timing was spot on. Um, and uh, you might think that you're a pretty good drummer or whatever, but I'll tell you, it's a humbling experience. And uh, um, it was kind of embarrassing to listen to some of the takes after they, they came back and I listened to them. Even I was kind of like, oh, that doesn't, that doesn't sound very good. So, uh, but thank God that's why we do uh, 47 takes and hopefully you get one. So, uh, but I think just getting the timing down, um, you know, Tom's responsible for the sound. He can make all the magic with that. But it's just, you know, just getting it right, um, not getting it too busy. Um, I think keeping it uh, simple, stupid sometimes is, is better than overplaying. Uh, which I think a lot of people tend to do, and, and if you're doing it live, you can certainly do that, but uh, when you're in a recording studio, keeping it simple, that's, that's the key. The whole project, uh, to me, it seemed to come fast and furious. I think when you're uh, recording original music, you have that moment. You have that moment in time to get it right, to get it down, and then, it, and then it's on tape, and then it's done. Then we moved on to the next song. So, um, it, it's so rewarding, rewarding now to uh, go back and listen to it and, and, it, and it's refreshing and, uh, and, and to know that uh, we have a quality product. So all of our hard work in the studio and, and my hard work on, on the bass parts and the vocal parts really just, you know, to hear the final product, that's the reward. I love creating. So it was really nice. Tom and Heather were, were there. In fact, I got a funny story when Heather wasn't there. but. Uh, it's nice because I can, you know, create parts and I like having catchy parts, uh, you know, not just a bunch of jamming throughout the whole thing. Um, and it was nice to have that feedback of, yeah, we like this, we, you know, that, can you try this? And, you know, it was really a real creative, collaborative process, which I really enjoyed. It's time to we won't stay anymore. Is there life for us drill. on another Did shore? We won't be afraid <laughs> when we see that <laughs> you'll <laughs> It's not good to leave Tom and, and myself on our own. Okay, so Heather writes, which is one of my favorite songs, and, and it, on the CD it comes out and the emotion really comes through, and it's a song called Sasha. So. Uh, Heather uh, was unavailable and I'm coming over to put down my parts and I, I kind of had some ideas and things and, and it talks about uh, you know being on a cal carousel and Papa can we go back again and I think wow this is a happy song you know and I'm always into the whole musical and sometimes don't listen to all the lyrics exactly I think well this is kind of a happy song so Tom and I get together we put this thing down and uh, we find out Heather hated it well I don't know if I hate it but it was like it's all happy well it was a sad song so <laughs> you know, we had to come back and I, I did some other things, which, uh, but it was just, it was just funny how uh, the words, the ones that I listened to, said something different to me. However, now uh, in the finished song on the CD, it, uh, melancholy, 
is the word that I use to describe it, but it's a beautiful song. So. Tapestry of Shadows from the beginning to now has really been the longest process that it's taken us. We almost kind of do a, an album uh, a year uh, since we've started, and uh, this, is, this has taken us a little bit longer because we have had to bring, you know, we, we had to bring other things into the mix and um, it, it really wasn't a studio album. It was a partnership with the guys. Um, if I think about specifics, uh, we had Jimmy, we built a studio in his basement uh, with, with Gary. Um, he came in almost at the end of the music and added the icing to the songs. Uh, and Tony came in and we would be writing things on the fly. So it took a lot longer and then it takes a lot longer when you're mixing too because you're, you're really listening for, you know, because we were, didn't all perform together, you know, when was, was this a hit that was off this one? You know, how do we get that beat so it's just fantastic? You have to line up all the parts. So um, the creative process took a lot longer, um, but I think in the end, you end up smiling because you know that when you hear you, you hear Tony playing the bass, that it's him. And when you hear the drumming, you, you see Jimmy smiling. And when you hear Gary playing the violin, that you know he has the passion for the song. And so it's not just Tom and myself as singer-songwriters, it's now kind of this, this close unit, you know, it's the band, it's the Humphrey McCowan band. I think for me, I usually am typically the project manager, so I have everything lined up. I've got the time frame that we're going to get things done. I've got, you know, the the table that says here's when we're going to have things accomplished and all that. It didn't go that way. So I, it was. I, I think the big, biggest challenge was me being patient, uh, patient with the process, patient patience with. Um, the guys and you know, having to bring you know them back in when we didn't hear things right and we're like ah oh, you know we got to bring them back in. It's not that we didn't want to hear them. It's just that it was just and to me it was an additional step that had to be taken. And then also patience with myself because I've really never performed a you know instrument on on the CD. It's typically been Tom's been playing the piano, so I played the piano this time. During the singing part. Um, Heather really took me to boot camp, you know. I'm, I'm up here singing, thinking I'm doing, a, you know, an acceptable job, and then, oh, we've got some work to do with you. Let's, uh, let's do some basic things, and uh, she, uh, sh she really beat me up, you know, physically, taking me through vocal fundamentals and, and, and giving me a taste of, of what that's like. And, uh, you know, I remember at one moment, um, trying to show me you know what it's right to sing using your diaphragm instead of just singing from your chest is that she she literally had um, a book pressing against my my abdomen to drive that point home but it it really helped make a better recording <laughs> well other than you know it's kind of humbling you know you're not uh, as good as you think you are um, I tell you though, the, the, the work ethic that goes into it and uh, working with Tom uh, was amazing. How many takes and uh, you kind of test, quite frankly, people's patience when you go through one of these uh, projects. You can imagine having to listen and, and do something 47 times. So you've always got Heather trying to feed you food and sugar and all those kinds of things to make sure you're alert. I got yelled at if uh, I didn't eat properly, so I had all that good stuff going for me. So. But uh, I think just coming mentally prepared and um, uh, being able to kind of sort where you're at out in your mind after going through it so many times, it's pretty challenging. I, I only stand up and yell and wave my arms when I'm trying to direct Jim on, on the parts I want. I was doing a lot of dancing when I was uh, watching him play. It wasn't intentional dancing, it was more like 
Look at me. Look at me. I'm over here. <laughs> well, I would say probably what I ended up doing at the end, which I, I should have done really from the beginning, we come up with a real nice line. And then I just want to tweak it, make it you know, just perfect um, and have it come across that way. The same line, but it's remembering what I just did. So I eventually then just started writing some stuff out. It was great because I could go back and I knew what I just played. So I would say that, uh, you know, that's, and that's always a challenge when you're creating is, is being in the moment and, and doing something that just, it comes across and it's perfect. Well, it happened in the moment. Now, how do we come and recreate that and still bring that across in a recording? Hi, Heather, where are we today? We're at uh, staging in Sycamore, Illinois. What are we doing? Uh, we're putting together a complete bay of uh, risers and scrim and things like that so we can do our video shoot tomorrow. What song are you going to be shooting? Uh, Passing Shadows from our fifth CD, Tapestry of Shadows. We developed something that I think is very unique. You know, it's kind of, it, it took years to figure out what we are and I guess it's kind of Americana, which is kind of a blend of different American styles of music. And in our case, you know, we're, we're blending folk and blues and rock and even traces of jazz together to make this one kind of unique thing. And the fact that Heather and I both sing lead vocals and we're doing that through, I'd say 90% of all the material is both of us together. Um, that's a unique sound. Usually you have just a lead singer. In our case, we have two lead singers. And so I'd say people, people check it out. They want to hear something different. When I heard the new CD um, versus what I'd been practicing to, which was really a, kind of a, a scratch track, um, just, just the fullness, the, um, the, the end product sounds so perfect. Um, uh, and, it's, and it's just so uplifting and rewarding to know that the work uh, that, that we all put in um, has resulted in this um, fantastic new album and I'm really looking forward to sharing that with with everybody all our fans and um, you know the general public at large and, and, and get some new people on board I think right now we've got just the, the perfect combination of people I think uh, uh, it, it's the right size first off to go on the road which I think you got to take into consideration um, the personalities are just wonderful. Everybody gets along really well. Um, uh, and then we have the right, I think, uh, mix of instruments. Uh, you got drums, you got bass, you got the, the violin who kind of lays over everything, and then you got Tom and Heather playing all these different instruments and, and singing. And we're not, you know, we're not overpowering anymore over some of the vocals. I think that they still stand out nicely, but um, I think we've got probably the best lineup that we've had. It's been uh, almost over five years for me, and. Um, you know, I think we finally came up with the right recipe, and I think, uh, I think you're gonna hear that in this uh, CD. I'm grateful for not just the experience of being with Humphrey McCown Band, but also the experience of uh, meeting these great people, because they are great people. And I love them, and I think we got something special. It's kind of this strange mix of stuff that seems to work well, but I don't know who we sound like, because I've listened to a lot of other people trying to say, uh, or find somebody that maybe we could uh, hook up with them because we're real similar and we don't find anybody that's doing something really similar to this. So we're hoping it catches on. Otherwise we'll just be oddballs forever. <laughs>